Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to derive the equation for wear strength of the gate tooth. Wear strength can be defined as the amount of tangential force that the teeth can transmit without pitting. The failure of the gate teeth due to pitting occurs when the contact stresses between the two meshing teeth exceeds the surface injury strength of the material. In order to avoid this type of failure, surface hardness should be selected in such a way that the wear strength of the gate teeth is more than the effective load between the two meshing teeth. So after deriving the equation for wear strength, then you can understand that how to decide the wear strength in such a way that this is more than the effective load acting between the meshing teeth. This entire analysis of wear strength is done by Buckingham based on the H theory. So that's why we have to know what is H theory. So H theory is something like this. When two cylinders of diameters D1 and D2 are in contact, as shown here, under the action of the force P applied like this, then at the point of contact you can observe the deformation. This deformation will be in the elliptical form and the total deformation we are indicating with 2B and half of that is B. So this is the equation for B. This is the equation for contact stress or compressor stress. This is load acting and B is the deformation, half the deformation and L is the length of the cylinders. Here B half of the deformation equal to 2 into P into 1 minus mu square mu is the Poisson's ratio into 1 by E1 plus 1 by E2. E1 E2 are the modulus of elasticity of the two cylinders and D1 D2 are the diameters and L is the length of the axis of the cylinder. Okay. Next substituting the equation B in equation A that means this B value if you substitute here then it will be something like this. If you take some assumptions like this, the cylinders are made of isentropic materials that means all the properties remain constant in all the directions. Uh, this entire analysis will be under the elastic limit. That means second assumption is uh, the elastic limit of the material is not exceeded. So within the elastic limit only we are studying this. Then dimensions R1, R2 are very large compared to the total deformation 2B. Then you can take uh, Poisson ratio mu equal to 0 0.3. If you substitute this value mu equal to 0.3. 0.3 here it will be something like this this is the equation with respect to cylinders if you apply this equation to the gate teeth the total load acting on the gate teeth p equal to pn that means that is the normal load so pn equal to pt by cos alpha that is known to you l equal to length here if you apply this for gate teeth length is nothing but face width l will become small b then e1 e2 are the material properties that won't change r1 r2 values that means radius of curvature of the elliptical teeth that you have to form that means the elliptical portion radius radius of curvature you have to find the unknown parameter here is this one if you find out this one then you can easily apply this to the gate teeth so to find 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 we are taking the geometry of the two teeth as shown here here you have to find the radius of curvature so at any point you can find the curvature so for my convenience i am taking that point as pitch point Okay, when this is the pitch point, this is the diameter of the pinion DP. Half the diameter of the pinion, this is the radius means half the diameter of the pinion. This is the half the diameter of the gear. This is the pitch circle. You can notice that circle here. Okay, this is the common normal. Okay, when this common normal is making some angle with this, his pressure angle alpha means this will become alpha, this will become alpha. Then if you take the advantage of this geometry like this, if you observe this particular triangle, this distance will become r1 okay here you can form you are finding the radius from this you can get with respect to pinion sin alpha equal to opposite side r1 by hypotenuse that is dp by 2 from this r1 equal to dp sin alpha by 2 you will get like this if you draw a perpendicular if you construct a right angle triangle like this this particular distance will become the radius of curvature for this involute portion with respect to this gear this i am indicating with r2 this is alpha then again if you take sin alpha with respect to gear sin alpha equal to opposite side r2 by hypotenuse that is dg by 2 from this you will get r2 values dg sin alpha by 2 you will get okay now r1 r2 values are known our aim is to find 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 substitute those values here then you can take d uh, 2 by sin alpha is common then 1 by dp plus 1 by dg you will get so 1 by dp plus 1 by dg this term i want to simplify further so that's why i'm taking the help of the ratio factor like this 
सो रेशियो फैक्टर क्यू इज डिफाइंड एज टू इंटू जेड जी बाई जेड जी प्लस जेड पी ओके दिस ऑलरेडी यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर अदर कोर्सेस लाइक थीरी ऑफ मिशन एक्सेट्रा ओके नाउ हियर मॉड्यूल इज नोन टू यू सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन ऑफ क्यू फॉर इंटरनल गेयर्स दिस विल बी फॉर एक्सटर्नल गेयर्स फॉर द टाइम बींग यू कैन सिटर ओनली एक्सटर्नल गेयर्स फॉर गेट अबाउट द इंटरनल गेयर्स ओके मॉड्यूल एम इक्वल टू डी पी बै जेड पी with respect to this uh, pinion then here we want to replace this zp value that's why zp equal to dp by m you will get in the same way zg equal to dg by m you will get now you substitute this zp zg values in this equation then q value will become 2 into dg by dg plus dp you will get this uh, 1 by m term is common in both numerator and denominator that will gets cancel then q value you will get it like this okay now 1 by q means you just reverse this that is uh, dg plus dp by 2g you will get then 1 by dp plus 1 by dg value we want to find so that's why if you want to add these two you get the denominator like this dp into dg and in numerator you will get dg plus dp you will get okay now this dg plus dp by this dg this term you can write as 2 by q like this this dg by db plus dg this particular term you can write as 2 by q that is 2 by q into this dp you will get here okay that means 1 by dp plus 1 by dg is equal to 2 by q 2 by q into dp okay now you can one at 1 by dp plus 1 by dg this particular term is here that means to get 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 you will get 2 by sin alpha into 1 by dp plus 1 by dg means 2 by q into dp this is 4 q dp sin alpha you will get now you can substitute this value at the place of 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 in this equation in this equation 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 value just now we have calculated p value is nothing but for gears that is the total load acting that is pn pn equal to pt by cos alpha and l equal to axial length means for gears that is the face width that means l equal to b now you substitute all the values in this equation this p equal to pt by cos alpha you have to substitute at the place of l you have to substitute b at the place of 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 you have to substitute this term okay then after substituting all this if you simplify this then sigma c square value will get as 1.4 into pt by bq dp sin alpha cos alpha into 1 by e1 plus 1 by e2 you will get now i want to make it much simple like this this entire term i'll call as some constant load factor as k that means k equal to the sigma square into sin alpha cos alpha into 1 by e1 plus 1 by e2 by this 1.4 term i am calling as k then what are the other factors left here b q dp if you want to find pt value p2 equal to b q dp into this entire term k k is nothing but this term okay now pt equal to b q dp into k you will get so here in place of pt in place of pt i can write sw because sw is the amount of tangential force that is the wear strength sw is the wear strength wear strength means that is the maximum amount of tangential force that the tooth can transmit without pitting okay pt is the tangential force that the teeth can transmit but sw is the tangential force that the teeth can transmit maximum tangential force that the teeth can transmit without pitting okay so we can replace pt with sw then equation for wear strength or buckingham's equation is sw equal bq dp into k okay where sw is the wear strength in newtons sigma is the c is the surface injury strength in newton per mm square this sigma c value will be there in k so here to find out the sigma c value a lengthy equation is there so that is 
k equal to sigma c square into sin alpha cos alpha into 1 by e1 plus 1 by e2 divided by 1.4 something in that way. Like the equation is there. To make it simple, what G. Neiman done is, he assumed that pressure angle is 20 degrees and the both gears are made of steel. Then e1, e2 value is something like this, that is 2 lakh 7000. He substituted all the values <coughs> and he has considered sigma c value as 0 0.27 times of bhn if it is in kg force per mm square if you want to convert this in newton means you multiply this with 9.81 then it will become newton per mm square then by substituting this e1 e2 value sigma c value and alpha value in this equation it will be something like this after simplification you are getting a very simple and easy equation to find out the k value that is load factor as 0.16 into bhn by 100 whole square okay then when the surface hardness is known to you very easily you can get the k value using this equation when surface endurance stress or when the contact stress or compressive stress is given then alpha value is given even e2 values are given then you have to go for this equation in this way very easily you can find out the wear strength by finding out the k value and by finding out the SW value using this equation. Once you know the K value, B is the phase width that will be given the problem. Q is the ratio factor known to you. DP P circle diameter that is D, DP equal to M into ZP and ratio factor Q equal to 2 into ZG by ZP plus ZP. Something in this way very easily you can find out the wear strength of the gate teeth. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel.